pre-crash history. Uh, we've already talked about a lot of this. Be prepared to explain M MMPI results. The MMPI is, has become a favorite of the defense industry in these cases. The MMPI was a personality test that was, I think a Dr. Butcher out of Minnesota uh, developed the test and it was, it was developed with psychiatric problems in mind. It was never developed or uh, uh, the word to, uh, there's a word for when you have a, a test. Uh, it was never justified, so to speak, with a population of brain injured people. It was never norm. That's the word I'm looking for. There's norms for what's normal and what's uh, uh, psych severe psychiatric problem. There are norms for the results on these MMPIs. There are no norms for what is a brain injured person's profile look like. So that's, that's just, if you just remember that, that's enough to remember to start with. And, and you want to be prepared for that because the defense doctors are going to say that um, If, if you're prepared for that, and if you have a, a witness that, that you're willing to work for, and if all the stars line up and you have success, which we were fortunate to do last year, uh, have you reviewed MMPI results of people with brain injury? Yes, I have. And the result that Mr. Breyer had in his MMPI in 2009 that was given to him by Dr. Horn, the defense expert in our case, is that consistent with the type of result you've seen with other individuals who have suffered structural damage to their brain? It is. And that was really critical testimony in our case because Dr. Horn's whole defense was based on the idea that the MMPI suggests that this person was exaggerating their symptoms and, and that they were a secondary gain type of defense, which we've all seen, you know, all the time, not just in brain injury cases, but all cases. So be aware of that. The MMPI is a very imperfect measure, and uh, don't let it gut your case. Just a couple of other things that uh, sometimes as lawyers we overthink our exhibits, and, and I was working with Amy Pardick on the exhibits, and Dan Boob and I were working with her, and, and we thought this was just a great exhibit because this is actually a Tesla 3 MRI of our client, and and I don't think you can see it. Perhaps you can in the top left corner. There's two little red circles. And, and those are uh, scars from what uh, our radiologist, neuroradiologist testified were left as a result of bleeding at the time of the brain injury. And, and the importance, if you get any result like this on an MRI, keep in mind that that's just the tip of the iceberg. In order for, in, in the neuroradiologist at IU Med Center, his name escapes me now, testified that in order for anything to show up on an MM, MRI Tesla 3, it has to involve millions of brain cells, millions. So you could have hundreds of thousands of brain cells injured and have a negative MRI. That's why a negative MRI doesn't really prove anything. But if you have this, this is big. And we thought this was just a great exhibit. And Amy kept looking at it and says, what are you trying to show them? Why, why is it so colorful? Can't you work with the doctor? So I asked the doctor through email if she could come up with something, and this is what we went with. The doctor had the two little points at the top left. She got up, and the jury loved it. She explained that those are the ventricles, and this is where we found the damage in the brain, and so on. So sometimes simpler is better. This is a, uh, another one that, that we were real proud of. We had worked with an out-of-state company to put this together. Uh, this was our client's Halstead Ritan battery of results. This is a really great result, but uh, I've come to appreciate you really can't tell by looking at this, can you? And I don't know, I don't think there would have been enough time in trial for us to explain this. So working with the jury consultant, we came up with this on the left. This is our client's pre-injury level. And on the right is his post-injury level. And I don't know if you can see it, Pre-injury level, he was in superior, above average, superior range. Post-injury level, moderate to severe impairment. And this was based on Dr. Horn's, interestingly enough, Dr. Horn, the defense neuropsychologist, did this battery of tests, and not surprising, never commented on this 
Halstead Right 10. Never commented on this part of the test at all. Fortunately, we had our own neuropsychologist review the data and said, my God, this is a remarkable result. Um, and then here's another way to present that that we worked on. Normal is above, and the red line is where our client was two standard deviations below normal, which psychologists will tell you is a very big deal. Um, all right, thanks.